Okay, so in the previous video, we had created some system health cards here, and we have the ability to pass data from the parent component, which is our section health component here, which comprises this entire section, um, from that parent component down into each of these child components represented by a server component. So in the future, when we're getting our data from an API, we'll be able to query a database for different server objects represented um, in our database and for each of those results or rows returned back from the database we'll be able to create a new instance of a server component and then pass it some data like its name whether or not it's active and anything else that we'd like to display in our server component notice also that we have these toggle status buttons which we'll ultimately use to either turn uh, a server on or off or at least change its status from on to off or vice versa. And in order to get that working, we're going to need to handle the click event from the user on our button here in the server component. So let's go take a look at how we can do that. And just before I do that, we're gonna go ahead and make a commit here. And this time we basically created this server component. Okay, so let's head over into the code. So this was our section health component. What we're gonna do is head into the server components template. So we have a button here that says toggle status. And in order to respond to the DOM event of clicking on this button, we're gonna use an Angular event binding. And so we can do that just by simply, in this case, putting click in parens here inside of the button. And then we're going to assign this to a template statement. And in this case, that's just going to be a method that's on this component. So this will be our syntax. We'll have, again, click in parentheses here. And then we're assigning it to this template statement toggle status. And so this method here will be scoped within this component. So this is the server component template. And now if we head over into the server component.ts file, let's just go ahead and build out our method for our click event, which in this case is toggle status. And just to see it working, let's just go ahead and console.log toggle clicked. Okay, so if we head back into our page, and I'm just going to open up the inspector, and we'll click on console here. And so now when I click on a button, we can see that we are logging to the console toggle clicked. And so now let's look at how we can tell that a particular click event is coming from a particular instance of our server component. So I minimize. And if you recall, each of our server components here are receiving this server input, which is of type server. So if I hit F12 here, we can see that the server has an ID, a name, and a status. So what we can do in our server component is log, say, the server name, for instance. So we're going to delete this message. And here we'll console.log the server input dot name. And of course we need to say this that server input dot name. Okay, so if we revisit the page and now I click on each button, we can see that we're actually logging out the server name to the console here. So when I click on dev mail, obviously I'm getting dev mail the server name out to our console. I can also pass our method some argument, so let's take a look at that. So let's say toggle status takes a, an argument of online status, and it's a type boolean. And then back in our template, let's pass this, let's pass our toggle status method, server input dot is online. And I'll move the class out to a second line here. Okay, so back in our component, we're now taking in the current instance, the current server's online status into our toggle status method. And now just as an example, we could console.log this.serverinput.name and then I'm just going to put a colon and then we'll say online status here. And this is just to show that we can pass arguments into this method from the template as well. 
All right, so if we click on a button now, we can see true or false depending on whether this particular instance of a server is online. Now we're going to be looking at something called event emitters later on in this course when we actually want to send a message from these child components back up to their parent component when a button is clicked here. That's going to allow us to have the parent component then call some service, in this case a service that interacts with our database, to pass the payload from one of these child components here to that service in order to construct some type of query against our database. So we'll get into that in a little while, um, but this was just to kind of demonstrate how we can wire up a simple click event binding to a button here and have that call some method that's defined on our component. Let's look at how we might actually change some of these values and then actually change the color of our servers to either green or red, depending on whether they're true or false, and then being able to toggle those with the button. All right, so let's head back into our component here. So now what I'm gonna do is create a simple method called getServerAction, and we're gonna use that to change both the text on our button and the color of our server component in the template depending on whether or not the status is online or offline. And then we'll call that method each time our button is clicked to toggle it from either uh, the true or false state of is online, which we'll set up to also change those properties. So let's just call it get server action. And it's going to take a Boolean of is online. So we'll say if is online, then we'll set this dot server input dot is online to true. Then of course else, and since we just have kind of a binary state here, we can just simply have an else. Then we'll say this dot server input dot is online is equal to false. Now we'd also like to change the text on the button and the color of the component. So I'm going to store those in properties on our component here. And in one case color which will be a string. And then in the case of our button text, let's just call this property button text, which is also just a string. So if our server's online, then we'll set this dot color to be a sort of green color perhaps. And we'll set this dot button text oops, to be shut down in this case. So when it's on, we want the option to be able to shut it down, and when it's off, um, we want the option to turn it back on. So when it's off, we're gonna set this dot color to sort of red color, and this dot button text to start. And so now, inside of our ng on init method, which gets called whenever our component is created, We'll call our get server action and we'll pass it this dot server input dot is online. Oops, and of course this has to be this dot get server action because we're calling the method within this class. And then within our toggle status, what we'll do here is we'll actually update the component setting its is online status to the opposite of whatever it currently is when the button is clicked. So we can do that by just setting this dot server input dot is online equal to the opposite of this dot server input dot is online. Okay, so we're almost done. We need to make sure that the color of our server is now in line with the color property that's on our server component. So if we head over into the template, we can use the ng style directive. Do that here on our card itself. And the way that we're gonna use this is by simply putting ng style in square brackets here and then we're gonna set this equal to just some basic CSS. So we put this inside curly braces and we can just write CSS inline here, say something like background color. And we're gonna set it to color, which of course is our property color on this component. So this is kind of a nice way to change the style of a particular instance of a component um, depending on some property that's on it. Okay, so let's go take a look at the page now. Okay, so now you can see that we have some color to our server components here based on whether their value is true or false. 
And while we aren't completely done here with our toggle functionality, notice that when we click each of the toggle status buttons here, we can switch the value of the is online property from true or false, but we're not currently updating the color of the component when it's toggled. So let's look at one way that we might do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this for now. And let's head back into our server component.ts file. And I think what we can do for the time being is to kind of rethink the way that we're using this get server action method and think of it more as a set server status method that we can then toggle depending on its current state. So I'm just going to rename this for now. We'll call it set server status. And so when it's initialized, we're going to set the server status based on the input that we receive. But then when we toggle the status by clicking on the button, we want to essentially switch its status is online from true to false and update these properties. So we're going to remove this method, which simply flipped its is online status. And we're going to call this dot set server status. And we're going to pass it the opposite of the online status that get, gets passed this method from the template. So let's go take a look at our page now. All right, so now when I click on the toggle status button, we can see that it updates the status of the server from true to false. And now of course it's also updating the color and the button text because it's calling the set server status method and passing the ops and passing it the opposite of whatever its current online status is. So that's pretty straightforward. This will get a little bit more interesting when we are actually emitting events from this component back up to the parent component to actually send that toggle message out to our API to update the server status on the back end. And when we do that, we'll also look at how we can have our component button kind of disabled while it's getting updated on the server. So let's go ahead and make a commit. And here we basically just updated the server component. And we'll go ahead and push this as well. Okay, so we have completed more or less the layout of our application. So we've built three pages. We've got our sales volume page where we implemented some charts with Chart.js. We've got a latest orders page, which currently just contains some placeholders for building out a table upon which we'll create a new component to handle the pagination of our table, which will eventually hold hundreds or thousands of orders instead of just the five that we have placeholder values for here. And now we have our system health component, which is a, a pretty simple component that contains several child components, which in our case represent servers that we can kind of toggle the state of on uh, individually on each component. One thing I just noticed that we didn't do here was change the text on our buttons depending on whether or not the status of a server was online or offline. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. We'll head back into our server component.html and then rather than toggle status here, we had that property button text. So now if we go back and look at our page, we can see that this will also change depending on the state of is online for each of these components. Okay, so I'm going to make that push very quickly as well. Update server button text depending on is online state. Okay, so what we're going to do in the next video is switch gears a little bit and begin building out our web API. So our Angular 4 front-end application here will start to become much more useful and much more interesting with a live back-end web API. So we're gonna build that out in .NET Core 2.0 and we'll be storing all of the data for the application in a local Postgres database. After spending a little bit of time building the simple web API that we'll create, we'll come back to our front end app and start building out the service layer, which will sort of act as the glue between our front end and our back end. And I think you'll find that process to actually be quite simple as we'll be using Angular's built-in HTTP module to make requests. Once the service layer is complete, we'll then be taking a look at improving our front end, both in terms of style and functionality.
So we'll be looking at the web API over the course of the next several videos, but there is a lot more Angular 4 to come, and we're going to be getting into a few more advanced topics later on in the course. So I'll see you in the next video as we begin our .NET Core 2.0 web API.